Jesus. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek.
seven days a week. I've been on the radio, and I've never come on the radio unless I quote him. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Yeah. There is a great, famous TV preacher that perhaps today is one of the most famous preachers in America. And he says that under the Jewish covenant, the Jews do not have to come by the way of the cross. And he speaks many, many times to the Jewish convictions. But I want to tell you, there will never be a Jew in heaven. There will never be a Gentile in heaven. There will never be a sinner in heaven that didn't come by the way of the cross. It is not the Baptist way. It is not the Methodist way. It is not the Protestant way. It is not the Catholic way. But the way of the cross is God's way. And I believe with all of my heart that Satan's motto today is anything but Jesus. Anything but Jesus. Religion, good works, sacrifice, church membership, tithing, teaching, preaching. But Jesus <laughs> is God's only way to heaven. Yeah. And he is the only soul satisfier. He is the only creator that will be the redeemer. And he is the only one that will redeem this earth from the curse that God placed upon uh, upon Adam in the garden and upon the, on, on, on the earth when he sinned. So Jesus Christ is the only one yeah. that will ever lift that curse. God's fullness is centered in Christ. Yeah. He, his thoughts are of Christ. Who, who, who communicates with God? Only the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only way to know God. Right. And to get acquainted with God. And I tell you, when you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you know the Father. Because he said, I and the Father are one. So all approach to God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. All God's gifts are wrapped up in the Lord Jesus Christ. God's strength is in Christ. The Bible declares he is the power of God. The love of God is manifested in Christ. All that God is and all that we is revealed is revealed in the Lord Jesus. The Bible said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. The glory of God is seen on the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not on the face of Gabriel, not on the face of Michael, not upon the face of the Nigeria of any great man like Abraham, but only upon the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Christ himself in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 18 and 19, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the width and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye may be filled with all of the fullness of God. The breadth, the length, the depth, the height all refer to Christ himself. The breadth uh, the breadth of his uh, of his power and then the length of his love and the height of his glory and the depth of his sufferings is all revealed here in the word of God. Our benefits, all of our benefits are wrapped up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for us and Christ himself died in my place. The Bible declares in Galatians 1.4 who gave himself for our sins. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, the Bible declares he gave himself for me. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. In Titus chapter 2 and verse 14, who gave himself for us. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, when he had by himself purged our sins. Amen. And then in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 20, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And then the Bible declares in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for all. So, take away Jesus, and you have no sin forgiven. Right. Take away the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have no one that is able to cleanse us from our sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of the Lord Jesus. Christ is the hub. 
in which all the smokes of our blessings meet. He is a cord by which all of our blessings are bound together. He, in, this, in, in, in the nature of man, are all the seeds of iniquity and sin. In man rests all of the iniquity and all of the sin that has ever been in this world. And when I realize tonight that our Lord knows what's in every one of us, and the power of His blood is able to cleanse every man and every woman of every sin that they have ever committed. And when I realize that my wonderful Lord and Savior, what I was here upon this earth, how did He pass by every door of temptation? And there has never been a temptation that you had, and one that I had, that our Lord did not experience that same temptation, and without yielding to it. And when I realize that, I am so thankful for my wonderful Savior. And I know that in no other is there the perfection, and the holiness, and the righteousness, and the perfect man, and the perfect God, other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He met on the cross and paid the full price for all of the righteousness that God Almighty requires out of any lost man. I'm glad that the Lord Jesus Christ met and paid and uh, conquered everything that God's going to ever require out of me in order for me, Brother Earl, to sit at his feet one of these days in the city four square. I do not have to think of something new. I do not have to conjure up something and say, maybe this will give me a little special favor with God. All of, all of God is wrapped up in Jesus. Amen. I love that old song. I just want to give you one verse out of the course. Thy death, not mine, O Christ, has paid the ransom due. Ten thousand deaths like mine would have been all too few. To whom say thee, who can alone for sin atone? Lord, shall I flee? Where can I go to find a refuge? I don't have to go any other place but to the cross. And there I find on that cross, Christ only. If you look in the word of God, you'll find that Christ himself is a sweet smell. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2 declaring, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for our sweet smelling savor. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. That is, my dear friends, God smells Jesus and loves me. <coughs> I was a stinking, lost, rotting sinner. But when the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ was applied to my heart, I smelled good in the nostril of God. And I was accepted by Him. He became my burnt offering. In Leviticus chapter 1 verse 9, But his inwards and his legs shall be, shall be washed in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. This is typical of the delight that the Father finds in Jesus Amen. in accepting me. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So we are in Christ only a sweet smelling offering to God. To be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ is good. Like the firstborn, in Egypt, when the blood was sprinkled upon the doorpost. It is good to be saved in Christ, Amen. like Noah was in the ark. But I want to tell you, it's far better to be safe in Christ. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad I'm just as safe as the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm glad, my dear friends, that His glory Amen. will someday shine upon me. And the Bible declares that he laid down his life to take up ours. He laid his down, and in laying it down, he picked up mine. What a wonderful Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. As Christ is before the Father, so am I. 
Isn't that wonderful? Amen. You know how I look to God? Just like Jesus. Yeah. You know how I stand with God? Just like Jesus stands with him. Amen. All the relationship that the Father has with the Son, he has with me. Amen. All of the blessings, whether in all of the fullness of the Godhead, dwells in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing that I can think about that I can't have in Jesus. All of the gifts, all of righteousness, all of holiness, all of peace, all of joy, all of it is wrapped up in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible declares here in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and all power. I have a lot of people that write me thousands of letters <coughs> come to my office telling me why I need more than Jesus. They tell me that I need to be sanctified. They tell me that I need another tongue, <coughs> an unknown tongue in which to speak. They tell me that unless I receive this blessing or that blessing, I'll never make it to heaven. But I found out that in Jesus Christ, when I get him, I have all the things to have. Nothing else. I can't go back to an altar and get any more, brother, I tell you, than I got when I found the Lord Jesus Christ. Or when the Lord Jesus Christ found me, all of his power and all of his might is wrapped up in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he dwells in my heart. The Bible declares that only am I complete in him. But the Bible says that Christ I'm spotless in Christ. The word declaring in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. And then the Bible says that I'm holy in Christ. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10, by the, which will, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Every once in a while, I get a letter from somebody and said, you've got to have holiness to get to heaven. And you don't have it. You laugh too much. You smile too much. I'm glad, brother, that I don't have to look like a Monday morning view to be holy. But I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ came into my heart. He made me as holy as a son of God. And then the Bible says in Christ, we are in fullness. The word says, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22. In Christ we find his loveliness. The word says in Song of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 7, Thou art all fair, my love, there is, there is no spot in thee. In Christ we have his glory. The Bible declaring in John 4, 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Yeah. Then we are rich in Christ. Yeah. Uh, I uh, am amazed at the wealth of Mr. Ross Perot. I don't know whether you've heard him on television or not, when somebody asked him the question, how much of your own money did you spend in running for the office of the President of the United States? And I was surprised when Mr. Ro when Ross Perot said, $60 million. $60 million. And then in the next sentence he said, that was one month interest on my money. One month interest on my money. And I thought, oh God, what a wealthy man. But then I began to think of Gene Harold Smith. And I want to tell you, my friends, I saw him as a pauper. Yeah. Glory to God. But our Lord says that one soul, just one soul, yeah. that you win to the Lord Jesus Christ is worth more than all of the combined wealth of this world. Right. And every time we win a soul to the Lord Jesus Christ, we lay up a treasure in heaven where there are no thieves, right. where there are no moths, where there is no rust to consume it, 
and where our rewards will be eternal and everlasting. Amen. And I'll tell you, Brother Timothy, I'm glad that my wealth is laid up in heaven. Hey. I don't have to worry about the stock market. <clears throat> Somebody said to me yesterday, how much did the stock market lose or gain today? I said, that's somebody that's interesting. I don't know. I don't have one share of stock of anything in this world. So I don't look at that page. I'm not interested in the sports, so I just don't look at that page. And when I look at the obituaries and find my name, that makes me have cold chills, and I've just about decided not to read the obituary anymore. <laughs> but the thing that fills my heart is the fact that I'm rich hey. in Christ. Hey. Have you ever noticed the little word M-Y in relation to Jesus? As I'm hearing the word of God, I find him saying in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 26, my body, listen, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them, to the disciples, and said, take eat, this is my body. Then in, verse, in Luke chapter 22 and verse 20, likewise also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So there's my body. There is my blood. The Lord Jesus Christ said, and Harold, it's yours. And then there is my life. He says in John chapter 10 and verse 15, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And then there is his flesh. The Bible says to sustain and to satisfy us in John 6, 51 through 58. And then there are my hands and my feet as they read in Luke chapter 24 and verse 36 where the word says, Behold, my hands and my feet, and is I myself, handle me, and see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And then there's my word in John chapter 5 and verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. Summing that up, how rich am I? Amen. Then he speaks in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18 about my church. I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell Amen. shall not prevail against it. I can understand how any saved person can treat the church lightly. Right, right. I can understand why any born again believer would not love the church of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. I cannot understand why any man that claims to be a born again believer is willing to give of his time, of his talent, of his testimony, of his treasure into the house of God. Amen. I believe with all of my heart and with all of my soul that today those that we cannot get inside the house of God and will pass up the church like a pay train dressing up a tramp and go play golf on the Lord's Day or go to the deer woods or whether go to the or whether I tell you or something else, I believe that that man is a lost man. I do not believe that a born again believer can get by with that God will let him drown. Or let some other deer kill him. You deer hunter, shoot him out there in the woods. I believe that with all of my heart. I am convinced that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the bride Amen. of our wonderful Lord. Amen. And when you mistreat a man's bride, you're in trouble. Amen. And then he refers in John chapter 20 and verse 17, My father and my brethren, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to, unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and to your God. Amen. And then the Lord speaks, Brother I tell you, in Matthew 11, 29, about my yoke. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And then he talks about that wonderful rest. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, what a rest. Yeah. He talks about my spirit in Acts chapter 2 and verse 17. 
And then in verse, we find in Hebrews 8 and 10, he talks about my laws. And then in, in John 14, 21, he talks about my commandments. This is what he says. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Then we find in John 10, 27, my voice. My sheep hear my voice. I believe that the Lord knows who his sheep are. Amen. I guess I received a thousand letters saying, Preacher, how could a born-again preacher do what these two men have done? And I'd always write back and I'd say, the Lord knows his sheep. And they recognize his voice. And the Bible says, and they follow him. Amen. And I don't believe that the, if you are following the Lord, you'll never go into an X-rated movie. I don't believe that if you're following the Lord, you'll never pass by your church and go to Atlanta and watch the Falcons play football on the Lord's day. I do not believe that if you are following the Lord, that you would sit at your home or farm your farm or cut your grass on the Lord's day. I mean to be found following the Lord at his house. And then the Bible says, my joy. In John chapter 15 and verse 11, these things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. How many of you would sell tonight for a million dollars? One million, tax free, the joy that you have in the Lord. I'm not talking about your salvation, but just the joy of his salvation. I meet every day of my life hundreds of people that claim to know the Lord Jesus Christ and they have absolutely no joy. No joy. But he says, my joy, I give it to you. And my joy is F-U-L. And so few of us have it. And then the Bible says, my name. In Matthew 18, 21, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Yes. So I tell you, if my wife and I just gather at our family altar at night, Jesus is there. He says, well, there is two or three. How rich we are. And then the Bible speaks in St. Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 9, and he said unto them, My grace is sufficient for thee. What price do we put upon the grace of God? And then in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says, And he said unto them, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So we have the strength of God, the grace of God, the power of God. And then in John chapter 15, and verse 9, he tells us about my love. As a father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Then my peace. He refers to in John 14, 27. Peace I leave in you, my peace I give unto you. Then he talks about his hand, my hand, in John chapter 2, verse 28. And then, last of all, he speaks in John chapter 17, and verse 24. Father, I will that thou also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. That's what Peter, and James, and John saw on the Mount of Transfiguration. Since this is true, what a prize we have. Amen. And what a jewel we have. And what riches we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is our only high priest Amen. and advocate. The Bible declares in Hebrews 8.1, we have such an high priest. In John, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1, we have an advocate with the Father. Now there is a tremendous difference in these two offices. He is the high priest and he is the advocate. They are distinct and different. Priesthood is between God and his people. And the one is for the worshipers. The other is connected with fellowship. 
as our high priest, he is able to succor us. And the Bible declares he is able to sympathize with us. Yeah. As our advocate, he is able to take our place and stand before God and plead for us and succor us in the time of our temptation and he supplies us with all of, our, of the grace that we need for every situation that we face. Suckers us in our trials, like the three Hebrew, Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, Daniel in the lion's den, Paul, brother, I tell you, before the courts of, of, of Agrippa, he is our advocate. He removes our defilement when we confess. I love to have a testimony meeting occasionally in my revivals. And I guess about 15 or 16 years ago, I was conducting a revival meeting, and I decided one night to have a testimony meeting. And a precious lady among those that testified stood up. And she said, praise the Lord, I'm saved. And I'm sanctified. And I'm going to heaven. And it's been 14 years since I committed to sin. I said, oh my, my dear lady, sit down. Sit down, you just broke your record. You just told a lie. I don't care who the preacher is. And I don't care how many Pentecostal churches you belong to. It doesn't make a difference how many Baptist churches you belong to and how many times you've been ordained. There is not a one of us in this house since God saved us that hasn't had to ask God to forgive us of some sin. Amen. No, it may not be adultery. It may not be fornication. It may be hate. It may be malice towards some brother or sister in the church. It may be that I have lied to you or stolen something from you. Whatever that little sin is, it may be that I lost my temper. You know, there's nobody in the world that knows us like our husband, like our wives. A lot of times, you know, things won't go just exactly right, and I swell up like a poison pup, and I pout all day with Bernice. And we just, I sort of, uh huh, yeah. We get down to pray that night in our family altar. And she begins to pray, and she says, Now, Lord, you know how he's acted all day. <laughs> now, you know, Lord, as a preacher, he ought not to be that way. And I want you to speak to him, Lord. And I tell you, I just pray over on my son's bed, Lord, help her to pray all night so I will never have a time to pray. But before I can open my mouth and say, Our Father, I have to say, Murdy's forgive me. And I don't know how it is with the rest of you husbands, but I'd rather apologize to the meanest man down here in jail than to apologize to Murdy's. I want to tell you, I, I, I mean, I just put that off as long as I can put it. And I've sinned. And I realize it. <coughs> I get a letter. Brother, just take my hide off. Well, I was filled with child manure. That just made me mad. And I said, if they're just assigned their name to that, I tell you what I do. And what I and then I get to feel, Lord, you didn't take that attitude. You asked them to forgive you while the nails were in your hands. And the thorns were in your brow. Lord, forgive me. And so I find that if I will confess, the word says, my little children, these things write unto you, that if you sin, then that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Aren't you glad you have an attorney in heaven? Amen. As I said, Murdis reminds me of my shortcomings. Somebody said to her one day, Murdis, did you ever feel that God had called you to preach? She said, only to him. <laughs> and more than me. And I cannot tell you how many sermons she's preached to me. I know at least 100 times she has said, if you keep driving like you were driving, like J.U., you're going to kill yourself and kill all of us. But the other day I was sitting perfectly still. And a car lambed into me, knocked me 36 feet down the highway, 
And I got home, or when she came to the hospital where I was, I said, Bernice, you've preached me a hundred sermons about going fast, but you've never said a word about sitting still. <laughs> but is it wonderful that we have friends? Amen. That we have family members? <clears throat> that we have a preacher? A pastor? They want to tell us about our fault and of our sin. And is it wonderful when we know that we have sinned? We have an attorney. We have an advocate before the Father, pleading our case for the Father. And I can hear him say, now, Lord, you know J. Harold. You know how weak he is. You know, Lord, what he did. Now you forgive him. God forgive him. And just as soon as I confess it, God blots it up. Amen. And forgives and forgets. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. God's children get defiled and contaminated. The fog of this world dims our Jesus, our view of him. The devil causes the germs <coughs> of disease to enter and we need the touch of divine physicians to bring us back into the right relationship with God. The mud of sin is splashed on us by the vehicles of Satan today. The root of bitterness is ready to grow in our nature. It makes a difference whether we're a preacher or deacon or Sunday school teacher. Yes, Christ ever lives. To succor, to save, to strengthen, to sympathize, to sanctify, and to satisfy. That is the Lord Jesus Christ is our high priest and our advocate. This proclaims how dear we are to him and to the Father. Amen. Then the Bible says that Christ pleased not himself. In Romans 15, 3, for even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. What kind of life was his? Godward, it was a life of prayer, telling of his dependence upon the Father. <coughs> In perseverance, in his Father's will. Purity from which there could radiate holiness as seen only in God, pleasing God as no other person. Jesus Christ is the only person that ever walked upon the face of this earth that pleased God always. There was never one time when our Lord displeased our Father. Manward, he had a compassion for the lost, for the welfare of his people. He came to represent the Father at all times toward people. He came to complete the work upon the cross. Jesus was always there. He always was looking after the poor, the forgotten man, the sinful man, and the fallen and the downtrodden man. He was always looking for a harlot to be cast at his feet. He was always looking for a thief to hang up on a cross by his side and die. He was always in command, always, but I tell you, comforting, we find that his word is our warrant. His directions are our delight. He is our plea in prayer and our power with men. His promises are our blessings. And in the Lord Jesus Christ, I find everything that I need Amen. to make me fit for the kingdom of God. Let us, let us realize that all of our blessings, all of the promises, all of the gifts, all of the doctrines, all of the graces are spelled with one word throughout the whole Bible. And that word is a little five-lettered word spelled J-E-S-U-S. -S. What does Jesus mean? To you nothing something or everything if it were not for Jesus we would have no hope if it were not for Jesus we'd have no holiness if it were not for Jesus we'd have no happiness and if it was not for Jesus we'd have no honor and we'd have no heaven right. in him we live and move and have our being hey. turn from the Lord Jesus Christ and where can you go? You remember when the Lord Jesus Christ had preached to the multitude? They just fed with the fish and the blows. And when he began to preach to them, 
The Bible said that all of those fish eaters, every last one of them turned and walked away from him. And our Lord looked at the twelve disciples. And one of them was tempted to go, Judas. But the Lord said, will you also go away? Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Amen. Amen. So if we turn away from Jesus, where shall we go? Jesus only possesses Amen. eternal life. Amen. It is from his hand. Yes. You will receive that gift or you will never receive it at all. Right. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt tonight that Jesus is in your heart and that he is everything. He has the priority, the first place. Every day when I write that little letter that I write to the Lord every day, in there, I always include this statement. Dear Jesus, help me this day to love you with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind, with all of my body, and with all of my strength. And my family, and my friends, and my neighbors, 10,000 times more than I love myself. And I tell you, Jesus Christ means everything to me. And for 62 years, not one time has he ever disappointed me. Not one time has he ever failed me. Not one time has he ever broken an appointment. Not one time has he ever broken a promise. Not one time in 62 years has the Lord Jesus Christ said, I'll do this and fail to do it. So I love him with all of my heart and with all of my soul. And I hope that as I come to the closing days of my ministry, that I can preach Jesus. If you would like to know more about this work, go to the web address on your screen. This is Don Smith, and again, I want to thank you for watching this video today, and may the Lord bless you in every area of your life.